I'm not discounting. I will never discount the impact of COVID. <laughs> Otherwise, I would have had no right in office to talk about the global financial crisis, the drop in crude oil prices, you know, and Ebola. We were preparing. <laughs> Previously, that's how Accra became, you know, the center for West Africa. Our offices, which we didn't use, were the place where the UN came and coordinated for to reach out to, you know, so most of the things that were coming for Sierra Leone and the rest, we actually, you know, uh, brought here in some place, there's an office which was open. Yeah. No, I'm not underestimating it at all. What I'm saying is that we would always have crisis. And the, and the, the test, the test of resilience, it's not when times are good. The test for resilience is when times are bad. Right? It's like a household. The test of resilience of your family. Oh, you can have anything on the dinner table. Right? Let your child qualify to secondary school. It takes precedence. <laughs> buy chobox, you have to fill the chobox, buy uniform, buy this, the family has to sacrifice. So they go for a loan. Our parents went for a loan. My parents went for a loan from neighbors. If you go don't pay, you can't go for the loan. If you are well off, you even have to make a sacrifice. Even the rich people have to adjust to accommodate that. That's not that is a normal contingency. That is something which you would expect, and that's a positive one. But children fall sick, they are admitted, right? If you don't put money aside, it's something that is, we say, is, you don't wish it to come, but so long as there are children, mosquitoes or whatever, it's inevitable that they have fever and things like that, right? So that's what I'm saying that, yes, all I'm saying is it may be the biggest, but I'm making two points. I'm saying three points. I say one admit that or be candid to Ghana that you had a fiscal problem before COVID. And two, don't downplay somebody's uh, crisis. It may be smaller. Because remember, before COVID, the deepest crisis the world faced was the global financial crisis since the depression. Right? And so there are minor ones. And I'm saying if you are able to prepare as well, if you are able to prepare for the minor once when times are good, as when we had crude oil and uh, you know additional crude oil, uh, seventy thousand barrels to nearly two hundred thousand, then you will be able to, you know, prepare for. You would have prepared better. That's the point I'm making. And so I'm saying that if we are prepared better together with the five billion, nearly five billion that we got, we should be able to handle. But I'm saying that given the size of our economy, why were we not able to, you know, to manage with five billion, you know, ostensibly to support COVID? It's not a small amount of money. I remember during the other crisis, <laughs> uh, we didn't even really have the benefits. We had, a, you know, 2015 thereabouts when we were in the program, right? We were slapped with zero financing. We were slapped with zero financing from Bank of Ghana. And here's the same bank, another crisis. Yeah, it may be deep, but could we not have been even allowed? Could we not have been allowed to even take the money which is provided for in our law, which is 5% of previous years, you know, uh, from Bank of Ghana, if they had it, you know, some profit and others, so that they borrow it, they lend it to the government, they don't actually it to their gifts. Right, couldn't we have gone there, but we're blocked. That's why I call up for even handedness. You know, because we could have taken the, something that is far lower, but it was blocked. That's why I'm calling for even handedness from the World Bank and the rest. Who were, who were, you know, who wanted us to touch him. Yes, it helped us to reduce the rate of borrowing and go and borrow and the rest. Yeah, so these are the points I'm making. I'm not downplaying it at all. 